So, from here... Where can I go? Can I climb into those squares? I don't think they're tall enough for me. Ah! Fuck! Mm. It's okay. Barely fell this time. Start from the railing. Oh, yeah, so. F oh, get back, get back. From there, I can actually just go right over there. Fuck! Ah! No! <laughs> oh. I don't like the way I levitate. Oh no, I grabbed him in their chair. God, they're so disturbing looking. Where's the other one? <laughs> I killed one with the other. Anyway, I was gonna say, I don't like how Levitate activates when you're climbing over something and that it sort of doesn't. So like normally if you hold down the space bar, Pretty much anywhere, you'll start to levitate after a second. But if you hold it down while going over something, like pressing space is how you is how you do this. If you press it, that is what makes you climb over. And if you hold it down, well, okay, there it worked, but many other times it was not working. This game is so fun to play. It looks so cool. It feels so good. Gliding through the air and launching objects. Can't dodge them all. So then, if I just hold it down going over, I should be fine? No! See? Once again, it didn't work. It's inconsistent. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Actually, no. That's more fun. So I guess if I want to do that consistently, I just have to make sure I just crawl up onto the walk, uh, onto the handrail, and then levitate. Which actually, can I even do that? I, I think the act of going over a railing forces you to, to go to the other side. Right? It does. Uh... Well, it seems to be... It seems to be working for me to start to vault over, release space, and then hold down space. So, tap, hold. This seems to be working, so I'll try that. Look at how I break the ground when we fall. That is so cool. It's really subtle. Nothing extreme. I mean, I guess it's kind of extreme for a human being. Normally you don't break, like, marble or whatever floor while just jumping up and down. <laughs> but, I don't know. It's cool. It's very, very cool. Alright, please don't let me down. Tap, hold. Thank you. 
Ah. Ah. Oh, yeah. that's one of the ones that has their lower jaw torn out. Seems like they're important to just be the only thing of significance up here, but I can't do anything with them. I guess I could... Ugh. I guess I could pick them up and put them back down. But I can also use this to get over there. Oh, where's that go? Lab 79. Is there anything else up here, by the way? No, I think this is the final one. Hit location, yes! That's so satisfying. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look around. Socks and ballerinas. The sound... The sound of bromance. Refreshing, like eating a lemon in a hot tub. Five stars from... Best... What does that say? Best magazine ever. <laughs> Five stars from best magazine ever. <laughs> mm. Soap. So on the Y axis we have soap. And then on the X axis we have weird. Apparently soap and weird have a, I don't know, is that called a linear relationship? One to one. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh, is this just a sound test room? With two of the biggest fucking speakers ever made? Yeah, this is exactly like what the... Uh, Black Rock looks like. Same shape. It's noise-canceling foam, except this time it is actually foam. God, it looks so pretty. Oh, they gave me a weapon mod. Hold on, what is that weapon mod? Levitation ammo efficiency. Ammo cost while levitating, minus 23%. That's huge. I don't know what that means, though, when it comes to something with a very small amount of charges, though. Like, the uh, pierce only can shoot twice. To save 23% of its ammunition, would that actually make any difference for it? It certainly would for other smaller things that use more discrete units. Let's try it with Pierce. I... that's not Pierce. Yeah, so for weapons like that, it does nothing. It's not like Dark Souls where you need to have just a tiny sliver of stamina and you can complete an action that uses even a larger amount of stamina. No, you need the full amount to be able to shoot again. So yeah, it's, it's actually kind of useless for the weapons I use, but it could be really good. I mean, raining death down from above and essentially it means being able to shoot 23% longer.
as loud as I expected it to be. Where's the vortex? I don't know. It's somewhere around here. It's a very mild vortex. <laughs> I was expecting violence. It feels so good to find hidden locations. So. Anything else? Right, like this is how we started getting up to those places in the first place, so no. But there might be some offices that I couldn't get to before. Maybe? Like... Well... After the battle, there's just feathers raining down gently. It's so much fun. Yeah, so... Oh, so it was over here. This is where I shot that one host. Hidden location! There's an area to central research I never found before. This. Lab one. It's just down here. Next to the shelter, bottom of the stairs, next to where you go down to Underhill's lab. That's where they are. Well, at least one of them. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff down here. Well, messed that one up. Song questionnaire. Auditory experience 84C, Poets of the Fall, My Dark Disquiet. Answer questions within two minutes of listening. Uh, did the song elicit any particular memories? If so, elaborate. Number two, did you at any point feel a strong emotion? If so, what emotion? Number three, did a clear image of a weapon appear at your mind during the song? If so, elaborate. Number four, provide a detailed description of your current surroundings as you see them. Number five, have you ever heard the murmur of voices when no one is present? If so, what did they say? Do you hear them now? Number six, please choose one from each of the following pairs. Uh, one or two, A or B, day or night, apple or orange, burnout, or fade away. Answer questions within two minutes of listening. There's no way you can answer all these within two minutes of listening. I mean, just providing a detailed description of your current surroundings alone would take a couple minutes. I 
I hear the sound of copyright problems. That did give us something in multimedia, though. Hmm. It's under music, so just plays the song. Yeah, I would love to listen to it, but no. Sorry. The realities of YouTube. Okay, so that was only one of them. There's still one more mold host. Well, still don't know where the third mold host is. However, back here in Luck and Probability, where we first met Marshall, we can get in here now. Nice. Showing a person's proximity to that. It's good if you're outside of the red border. Lucky item manifest. Bronze koi fish, China, attracts abundance and wealth. Feng Shui. Horseshoe, Ireland. Wards off evil. Orientation import. Heals up, allows luck to be kept. Heals down, luck flows outward. Moneki Neko, Japan. Beckoning cat used in shops. Paw held up to beckon customers, creating luck for the business owner. Four leaf clover, Ireland. Shamrock, rare plant variation. Connections to juridic healing rituals. Elephant, China. Protection, good luck, wisdom, feng shui. Light bulb, various. Documented gambling rituals indicate luck is produced when all lights in the room are turned on. Note, effects of items to be tested. Consider investigating the orientation of horseshoe. Also, consider positioning of feng shui objects. Proximity of luck items may influence luck readings. For more information on ritual use, lucky actions to perform and avoid, and avoid, and relevance to OCD behaviors, see file, blah, blah, blah. I think this might be a thing. The fact that this is in a secret room, I feel like I'm. this might be a secret area kind of thing. If I make everything the right way, this might do something. So, all lights on. These are on. Pretty subtle lights, but they're on. It's got a nice green glow. Unlucky. I know you're supposed to stand outside of the border for good luck, but I didn't think if I stood inside, something would explode. I just wanted to see what it did. Is it gonna happen again? I didn't just permanently wreck this thing by that thing blowing up. Okay, so... That's a light, right? Okay, now that's on. Let's check the objects. So lights... Is this just whether the lights are important or not? Because these just have question marks. Um, lights are important. That's fine. They're all on. Uh, horseshoe is unknown, but it should be down. 
Four leaf clover I should have, but I think I did take it with me. Let's go check. This relates to all these objects in here. There's the elephant. It's supposed to be good if the horseshoe's up, actually, so no. Yeah, I think it should, oh. I think it should be the other way. Oh, come on, I can't fix that horseshoe. Oh, I thought I already took one, but maybe it grew back or something. And fish. It needs to be less than two feet. I guess in the red border. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the four leaf clover doesn't have to be on me. It has to be here. Huh. I'm not sure exactly what I did differently. It was the placement of the fish. Because the note said you should be careful with the placement of feng shui items, and this was considered a feng shui item. So I was thinking maybe having it be within two feet is not the only concern, but it needs to be somewhere kind of sensible. I tried putting it over here on the table. That didn't work. And I put it there because, I don't know, if you want it somewhere close to this thing within two feet, Seems like about the best you can do, and it friggin' worked. What did that give me? An ability point, something, and even a suit. It gave me an outfit. That's my first outfit. You know, beside the one I'm currently wearing. I don't know what mod it gave me. But we gotta go check out that outfit. At the same time, let's go, I don't know, check out the Ritual Division. <clears throat> There's a control point up ahead, and we also need to kill mold hosts in here. Oh, I bet there's stuff up there. Heck yeah. Oh, you can grab these. Ah, got him. You can still hit them even when they're invisible. <laughs> the hell did that come from? If they can spawn up there, I can certainly get up there. And I see something up there, too. Oh, right. We can't change suits at this one. Only an executive. Okay. We'll do that a little bit later. Four ability points. I would like the ability to ground slam. Not that I think it's going to be that important. It probably won't, but it's cool, isn't it? I also would like match max launch damage. That would be pretty great. And more health. I want all of that. Uh, let's be sensible. Let's get more health.
Aha, is that enough? Yes. Oh, these plants are so pretty. light. A flickery one at that. God, that looks so cool. The lighting is great in this game. Rituals. Obsessive compulsive disorder, hoarding, anxiety disorders. While certain manifestations of these conditions are simply the result of mental illness, sometimes the individuals are simply performing something called rituals. Uh, numerology, dream logic, forfeiture, verbal formulae, repetitive action, and causal tethering are just some of the procedures involved. Some rituals are consistent, such as pulling the light switch cord three times to enter the motel, but some are erratic. While most people engage in minor rituals every day, the vast majority do not understand the importance behind their actions. Avoiding disaster, amassing luck, or simply locating lost keys are all the results of daily rituals. Individuals who recognize a deeper meaning behind these compulsive actions are inherently aware of the paranatural world and, as when located, should be considered for employment at the Bureau. Carla, file received. Thank you for the file. It was very helpful. I have re-archived it with the Blackrock research in case you need to refer to them again. Yes, the video shoots are always interesting. I expect my availability for those to decrease in the future, however, as my analysis of this newly discovered Blackrock variant is reaching a critical point. I hope you'll be able to attend them still. Darling seems to be under a lot of pressure lately, and I'm sure he would appreciate any support you can provide. Regarding the analysis you provided, I do not have any questions. Thank you for the expedious delivery. Research Specialist Dr. Carla Vaughn. A newly discovered Blackrock variant. Interesting. First time I've heard of there being variants of Blackrock. Where does this go? Just back down to the lobby. So, that's one out of three mold hosts in this area. I'm not sure exactly what is considered ritual division. Like, protective studies, is this still a ritual division? I would assume no, but given that I wasn't able to find all the ones in central research, maybe I do need to be looking a bit wider. 
Aha, I do need to look a bit wider. This is in the tunnel to the duck. Wait. No, that wasn't even considered one of the mold hosts. It didn't make the bar go up. Okay, that was one of them. Yeah, it was in the synchronicity lab, so it is a pretty wide net. Ah, found the last one in the bathroom. All right, let's go back to central research and cast our net a little bit wider. Let's check the ashtray maze. That might be considered part of central research. I just want to stop for a second though and appreciate how cool this looks. I wonder if anything's changed about the maze. It's before it wouldn't take me anywhere. Huh. Wouldn't take me anywhere. You know, I never thought to look up because I couldn't really get up. But now that I can levitate, maybe I could have gone up. Didn't seem like it. Well, screw it. I still can't find him in central research. Let's go to parapsychology where there's also mold hosts. Let's go through all this weirdness. Every time you see this, I think this leads you to the mold hosts. What? Uh oh. Was it? Oh, the game crashed! Seeing a bunch of the goop around here. We're a bit, a bit further into parapsychology now. Is this where we would have come from? It seems like it's a line. It seems like you just follow the goop. There's still another in parapsychology? Huh. Maybe the last one I killed before the crash didn't get saved? Or was that my first that I had killed? I do not remember. Anyway, follow the goop. All will be well. Here we go. See, this goop goes into the bathroom. Yeah, okay, here's the last one in central research. Also, just in the bathroom. I should let Underhill know. Yeah, I wasn't very observant. Um... I should have looked at the goo and how that gave you a very good clue on where they are. And how there's like little trails leading to them, so it's not like you only see the goo if you're in the room with them, but if you're a couple rooms away, you can sometimes find a trail leading to them. To Underhill. I found the host. They won't be spreading any more mold. Well done. I'll send burn teams to sanitize the locations. I'm beginning to wonder if these hosts are originating outside the threshold in independent patches of mold growth. You don't sound very optimistic. Oh, 
optimism is for farmers, as my mother always said. I suppose you could now return to that hiss business you all seem so concerned about. This woman has some incredible tunnel vision. Two ability points. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Let's end the episode by seeing if I can spend my ability points. Do I have anything I want to spend two on? And then we're going to check out the suit. Yeah, like, do I want to save up for more energy? That's always good. I really haven't put much, much into my skills, except for throw, of course. I think I'll save up for the final launch, launch six. Let's check out the outfit. Golden suit. This is going to look terrible. Oh. Oh, damn. That looks really good. When he said golden suit, I was imagining a joke, like looking like a golden person, like literally made out of gold, shiny. That looks really good, actually. Damn. Jesse's really pretty. <laughs> Look at that. God, it's very business-like, though, which is kind of odd for us, given what we're doing, how athletic we are. Jeans and a shirt feel a lot more appropriate, but... God damn, it looks stylish. Look at how those little dangly bits on the bottom of the uh, vest... And how they move around. Yeah, I'm gonna wear this for a while. Do you think anybody would react to it? Like, if I say hi, are they gonna go, whoa? Hey, I put extra security on your brother. No offense, but that dude is the scariest motherfucker I have ever laid eyes on. Like I said, though. No offense. Thanks. I have to go. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. No comment. Let's let's try Emily. Find anything interesting? Oh, they actually want to talk to us. How are you doing, Jesse? It can't be easy seeing Dylan like this. I'm fine. What can you tell me? Is he still human? Or is he his? I've taken numerous tissue samples and have tests running as we speak, but from the initial data, he looks healthy. I only see corruption in a superficial way. What does that mean? I don't know. This is all new. But if he's like you, maybe Polaris is preventing total his takeover. Or maybe this is just a new form of his. We've already seen how it affects people in different ways. Dylan told me he let the his in. Does that change anything? Voluntary conversion. I mean, hypothetically, that could affect the mental state post-corruption, as well as the extent of biological alteration. But again, this is new territory for me. I'll need time. You won't have it. I'm gonna shut down this live projector. That's how the hiss are getting in. Once I close it, this should all be over. Jesse, we don't know how this works. If you sever their connection to the source, it could cause a terminal chain reaction. Every his corrupted individual dead. Better that than what Dylan is now. I'm shutting it down. This has to end. Whatever happens, happens. Okay, just let me know how I can help. Thank you, Emily. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end the episode here, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, once again, we're definitely not going back to the main quest. There's still so many side quests and places I want to check out now with Levitate.